Look at this player highlighted by the X. He's making a really good run down the pitch and receives a perfectly timed pass from the wing. Player X is totally free in front of goal when the ball arrives. A clear cut 100% goal, right? Wrong. Player X blasts the ball over the crossbar and rumours say it still hasn't landed. But what seems like a crazy miss was not that unexpected. We will tell you why after you click subscribe and hit the notification bell. Short for expected goals, XG expresses the probability that a player will score a goal in a given situation, hence the name. So what does XG tell us? XG measures the quality of a shot. Essentially, it tells us how likely it is that the shot will result in a goal. XG is measured on a scale of probability from 0 to 1. An XG of 0 means there is no chance the shot will result in a goal. An XG of 1 means the shot will hit the back of the net 100% of the time. Here is an example. This player strikes the ball from outside the 6 yard box. Their shot has an XG of 0.5, or in other words, the shot is considered a 50% chance of scoring. Now let's go back to player X, who did not score in front of an open goal. Does this remind you of something? It's actually a scenario that played out in a match between Manchester City and Chelsea, where Kevin De Bruyne missed this sitter. And the XG for his chance was actually only 0.7. So 3 out of 10 times the chance would not result in a goal, 7 times it would. But what are the factors that determine a shot's XG value? What makes for a high or low goal scoring opportunity? Well, there are quite a few, such as distance to the goal, angle to the goal, body part the shot is taken with, the type of assist, the pattern of play, defensive positioning. There are loads and you can actually get more details in the article linked in the description below. So let's do a recap. XG, essentially it tells us how likely a shot will result in a goal based on set criteria such as distance and angle. So what does this all mean in terms of how you should look at a team's performance? Quite simply, over a long enough timeline, a team's XG should reflect the actual number of goals they score. Likewise, the XG a team surrenders should, over a long enough timeline, reflect the actual number of goals they give up to their opponents. A team's cumulative XG over a given number of matches can give us a more accurate picture of how a team has been performing. They may have been losing recent matches while generating chances of higher quality than their opponents. We may then expect this team at some point to start putting those chances in the net and win their football matches. And yes, a team with more quality players tends to create higher XG. It's measured on a scale of probability from 0 to 1, teams with higher XG will, in theory, score more goals, and that is the basics about XG. If you like this video, then hit the subscribe button and give us a like, and comment or ask questions below.